Yeah, it won't start. Oh, never mind. I've got to get to work, love. Well, why don't you leave it? Ring Jack. Tell him you'll be a bit late. The others are all off to work soon. We can have a lie in. You slept last night, didn't you? Like a log. I have to try a couple of glasses of wine every night. What do you think, then? You didn't see me get up all through the night going to the toilet, then? You shouldn't drink so much at your age. It wasn't the drink. Roy's been sick. He's made her eight mess in the bathroom. See how his car's gone again. She works all hours, does that, lass. She's gone on holiday. What? When? She's gone to the Caribbean. And if you want to tell the world, it's because she wanted a baby and I didn't. Oh. Yeah, well, I don't agree with it, you see. I think children should be brought up in a proper family, not by a couple of freaks. I wouldn't, well. <laughs> Come on, Betty, that's exactly what you think. A child needs a father, stable home life. No, well, well I'm not the sort to pass <laughs> comment. <laughs> All right, madam. If that's what you want to hear, no. I don't think this is a proper place for a kiddie. Oh, I'm sure you and Zoe would make ruddy good mothers, but I'm not sure either one of you is cut out to be a father. Well, it didn't take you long to find out what was happening. As a matter of fact, I told her. Oh, and uh, you didn't think it was private? Something for you and Zoe to sort out? <laughs> well, you obviously knew Linda. Well, she had to talk to somebody. And why couldn't that be me? Just because I didn't want a baby doesn't mean she has to go halfway across the world to sulk. You were the one bleating on about commitment not so long back. What more commitment is there than having a child together? You really don't have a clue, do you? There's anything you don't need in your room, you can always leave it in the store. You haven't seen how much I intend bringing. Now, if you're a hoarder, we're not going to do very well in the States. Having a trailer on the back of your bike is just not the thing. Taking over now, are we? Well, I'm only coming because you're not to be trusted on your own. And I thought it was because you fancied me rotten. Mm, that too. <laughs> I was thinking last night, selling the pub, there's no need. You could just leave Terry in charge. What are you setting up? I'm leaving the hot and VAT office in a grotty flat. That's not the same thing at all. Well, to be honest, my dear, this is just an excuse. Oh, I've had enough. You know, the hassle, the work, the ridiculous hours. No, I, I, I could be retiring to a little cottage overlooking the Bowling Green at Robblesfield, or I could be riding across America with the most beautiful girl I've ever met. Two lasses wanting a baby is one thing, but how would they do it? That's what I want to know. I'm surprised you didn't ask. Well, it's not like ringing for a plumber, is it? Hey, up. Table for one, is it? As long as I'm forgiven for last night. Oh, I don't know about that. Betty's suspicious about the orchids, reckons you've got a guilty secret. She's right. I spent the night with someone else. A Japanese businessman. Not listening to a word he said, wishing I was here with you. Well, as guilty secrets go, I might buy that one. Do you fancy a coffee? It's even on the house. Seeing as I've driven up from Leeds just to see you, I think I can manage a cup of coffee. Kathy, if I said lamb's kidneys to you, what would you think? Ah. Uh, Marlon, I don't want to do lamb's kidneys. The food I cook is perfectly acceptable <laughs> to everyone. Yep. But catering, right, is showbiz. You've got to add a few new little numbers to the repertoire every now and again. Isn't that right, mate? These lamb's kidneys, chef. On a bed of bubbling squeak with onion gravy, are they? You got it. Marlon, you aren't a chef. You're a kitchen hand. Excuse us. If kidneys are on the menu, I have a good idea whose they'll be. Miss Hughes, thank you very much for coming in to see us today. I'm Gordon Williams, the deputy head. This is Miss Lamb, the school bursar. Yes, I remember Miss Lamb. I was a pupil here. You were secretary yourself at the time. As I'm sure you're aware, Miss Hughes, the post of secretary in a school like Houghton Comprehensive is very demanding. Yes, I've no doubt. So what makes you think you're qualified? Well, I like a challenge. Um. I like working with people. I used to work as a doctor's receptionist for a while. You've had a few jobs for a while, including farm labourer. As a single parent, I do have to work. Actually, I think working with animals is a far more relevant qualification for this job than working with people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about 
Rome Wops, and I deliver at Signature Fish Dish. Marlon, if I hear that man's name once, it won't. I thought you'd like them, a bit like sushi. And if you knew sushi like I knew sushi... No! <sighs> Eric, talk to the lady. Last night she did prawns, tonight Rome Wop Orange. You'd be up for that, wouldn't you? Mm. Oh, my God. Mm. Mm. Hey, hey. Fruit de la mer, huh? A platter of prawns, salmon, roll mops, crab claws. Stupid pellet. You're right, I missed off crayfish. As a matter of fact, I thought we could make up for last night tonight. Ah, now if you're looking for a babysitter, I'm busy tonight, sorry. Actually, I was thinking we could take Alice. Well, I don't think she's one for fancy restaurants. You've got to teach her to appreciate good food. The earlier she learns, the better. Oh, I don't know about as that. As a matter of fact, I insist. I came to the perfect place today in Hotton. Hotton? Absolutely. Uncle Chuck's big time burgers. <laughs> now, there are two problems. One, I haven't made a reservation. Two, I haven't brought my dinner jacket. Well, if I don't wear my tiara, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> Kathy, are you doing anything tonight? Oh, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, we Only just. Only group... Eric is being very ill. I need somebody front of house. Oh, no, dear. Tell you what. Why don't I take Alice to Uncle Chuck's? Do you think she'll come with me? Well, if there's a burger and chips on offer. And tomorrow, if we can find a babysitter. Can we go out together? Yeah, sounds good to me. So, what's the matter with Eric? He says it's something he ate, but he only ate the same as the customers, and I've not heard of anyone else being ill. Have you sent him with him? I'll give him five minutes. Oh, I wish I could lip read. I don't rightly know where to start. Look, you know when our Roy plays his music too loud, but it lets you know just how thin the walls are, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, you're telling me. I mean, there's times at night when me and Linda. Well, I mean, our room's the only private place. Yeah, right. Well, that's just the point. Yeah, but it's not a problem. You don't want to upset Roy. I mean, teenage lads can be funny. Not Roy. Me and Jan. Oh. What? Well, we don't listen, you know. And any road, Linda says you and Jan had stopped when Roy were born. Yeah, one look at how Roy is a babby. It's enough to stop anybody in the tracks, isn't it? <laughs> look, Ned, if it's any consolation, we haven't heard anything. It's not surprising. Look, me and Jan, well, I don't really think you should be talking to me about this. I mean, if you and Jan have got a problem, why don't you speak to Jack or somebody your own age? The only problem we've got, Biff, is you and our Linda. Oops. For a start, you could all them bed springs, eh? And for another thing, there's no wrong with me and Jan's love life that a good night's sleep won't flame in cure. Went well, then. Give another brandy. Yeah, well, what's going on here? Moving in, if that's all right with you. Oh, Mr Turner living in sin, I don't know about that. She will have her own room. <laughs> yeah, of course she will. Hey, mind out, though, floorboards outside that spare room creak somewhat rotten. You mean I'm not the first woman you've had in here? You never told me about you and Mandy. Uh, have you ever thought this might be a bad move, Alan? They're ganging up on you already. You know what they say about two's company and that? Terry isn't here, Mandy. No, but I am. And I could really do with tomorrow night off, Mr T, cos Collins asked me out. Sure you two can manage without me. Joe is a guest, not a barmaid. You enjoy yourself, Mandy. It's not a problem. It's old, Alan. The misery is only just beginning. I see from your application you don't have any shorthand and typing qualifications. No, but I am comfortable with computers, word processing and spreadsheets. But you couldn't take dictation. Um. No, but... I don't think a lack of shorthand should be a problem. The school secretary is quite often the first person an outsider encounters, whether it's in person, on the phone, or on the page. I do think it's important we establish standards. I am comfortable in dealing with people. I'm sure you are, Miss Hughes. Now, unless you've any more questions. Oh, uh, no. In that case... Only when will I know whether I've got the job or not? You'll be notified if you've been shortlisted. Naturally, the most appropriately qualified candidates will be interviewed by the headmaster and myself. Right. Would you send in the next candidate on your way out? Oh. Well, I don't see what's wrong with him having a baby. Because it's not natural. What if he's a lad? He's going to grow up that confused. This is your mother. This is your mother's lesbian life partner. Well, how many kids grew up in proper families anyway? With two parents? You didn't. Well, then maybe that makes me more able to judge. No. You see, what I want to know is who's going to be the father? 
Betty, it doesn't quite work out like that. No, no, I don't mean who's going to smoke the pipe. I mean who's going to provide the wherewithal, you know, and I. <laughs> uh, look, I'm just going to take your dad home. He's not feeling well. Oh, Wack, if him and Roy are going to spend the night throwing up, it's going to spoil our evening. Well, actually, that's something I wanted to talk to you about. Right, who wants another one? Hey, it's not like you to drink so much at lunchtime. Mm. Oh, well, I'm just keeping my eye on Alan Turner and his lass. The proprietors. Mm. <laughs> so, what's this about tonight, then? Your dad's just had a word with me. He reckons that playtime's getting a bit rowdy. He says we're keeping the whole house awake. Oh, Colin, hi. I still want to take me out tomorrow night because I've got some time off. Oh, yeah? How do you think of that? <laughs> Afternoon, all. Well, just look who's here. Uh, Col, uh, got to go. Someone, someone stand up. Bye. I'm looking for a woman who's looking for a man. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, what a flipping nightmare. We lost everything. Passports, money, credit cards. I'm surprised the British Embassy didn't help. Oh, I well, well they did what they could. Well, you're here now. Did I miss out? No, no, nothing much. Well, there, there, there are one or two things. Um, Joe's going to be moving in with us. Oh, I. Well, only until America, uh, and she'll have her own room, of course. Well, did I say out? Uh, have you got a date set for when you're going yet? It partly depends on Alan. I'm, I'm going with her. Oh, great. Good on you. Mandy and I can court while you're away. Well, well actually, Terry, I'm... I'm selling the pub. Can I get you anything? Well, brandy would be nice. Right. Oh, I'll, I'll get it. You don't leave the shop. Oh, never mind the shop. Look at you. What happened to your eye? Well, we was mugged. There's a gang of them. There's ten of them, at least. Oh, well, you're lucky that's all it was. Well, you know, me and Tell put up a bit of a fight, but... Oh, you silly man. You should have just given them what they wanted. You could have been really hurt. You managed OK without me? Oh, of course. Not a problem. Just glad you're safe. After Terry's phone call, we didn't know what to think. Yeah, well, I, I thought I didn't want to worry you too much. Well, it's a pity you couldn't have rung yourself. It made me worry even more. She's not seeing anybody, is she? Paddy, Mandy Dingle's love life is the last thing on my mind. Oi! Am I walking him around for a reason? Hmm? Oh, right. Uh, yeah, uh, just leading gently towards me. What do you reckon? Well, he looks sound to me. Yeah? He's a great little mover. Hi. And the horse is okay too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Biff. All right. Come on. Come on. She was a witch when we were at school. Well, it's a prerequisite for the job. School secretary, cauldron, broomstick, mysterious disappearance of chubby children. I really wanted the job, and the deputy head was really nice. Would you fancy a drink to celebrate? <laughs> What's it to celebrate? Either not working with the Wicked Witch or getting the job. Why not? Came to see how the interview went. Hi. Chris, Jack Sugden's here. Oh, good. I'll go. No, it looks suspicious. Jack? Chris, <laughs> um, if this is an awkward time. No, no, not really. We were just going to celebrate Rachel's interview. Oh, you got the job. Great. <laughs> Not exactly. Either she did or she didn't. Either way, it's an excuse for a drink. Do you want one? Uh, no, thanks. How about a beer? I think I've got one. Well, why not? What's he doing here? He's looking after Joseph. You could see I was depressed after the interview. Well, why didn't you call me? I'd have come over. I couldn't. And what would Sarah think after me dodging her yesterday and phoning you today? Here. Thanks. <clears throat> well... Here's to your job. Who's Zoe intending the father to be? Oh, I don't think it had got that far. 
So, subliminally, she might have had ulterior motives in getting me back here. It wasn't Zoe, it was me. Can you not just let me have my little fantasy for a couple of minutes longer? Excuse me, I thought you were devoted to Mandy. I am, but in the interest of veterinary solidarity, I'd have given Zoe a right... I don't think that Zoe actually needs a man. You're a vet, for goodness sake. Have you never heard of artificial insemination? Yeah, I have. And I've also heard of non-alcoholic lager, but you don't mean to say I have to believe in it. No problems. Yeah, sympathy, mate. I mean, she was all ready to start chucking things, and then uh, I'll give it a sub story. Worked like a dream. How about you? Al's got other things on his mind. Oh, yeah. He's selling the pub. Got a ride across America on his flipping motorbike. What, with that woman? Yeah. Oh, I say I blame him. I'd be off like a shot. Who's he selling to? I not got round to that yet. Too busy moving girly into the pub. You're jealous. <laughs> well, me? I haven't fancied her for a second. I don't mean her. You're jealous cos Al's got a new little playmate. <laughs> Dad, I didn't think you were coming home. Don't fuss. Your dad's had a terrible time. She's been horrible. All the things she said about you. Well, I didn't know the truth then. Since when have you worried about the truth? I thought you could look after yourself better than that. It's all right for you being single. Poor it has got a family to worry about. Where have you been? You knew I was going out. Yeah, sorry, love. Uh, went to see how Ned was. Well, now you're here, you can make the kids their tea. I promised them you would do them spaghetti with cheese sauce. I can't do that. Well, it's about time you learnt. I don't know how long I'll be. Yeah, well, just don't go jumping in with both feet. Give Billy a bit of room to manoeuvre. Don't you worry. I'll drop in and see Rachel, too. She was so wound up yesterday, she must have been worrying about that job interview. I'll see how she got on. Yeah, right. Stop fretting. It's just butter and flour, add the milk slowly, and then the cheese. Couldn't be simpler. See ya. Now, do you want to go on? Not likely with my dad and Roy fighting for bathroom. And everyone looking at us as if we so much as have a cuddle. Well, there are alternatives, you know. Oh, yeah? What did you have in mind? Do you want to talk about it? What? Not ever it is that's bothering you. Well, there's not a lot to be said, is there? I mean, you didn't see out when you decided to sell up. You weren't here. Well, it's not my fault. I was stranded in Holland. Penniless. Passportless. Feckless. It's a bit hard, Al. Look, I haven't told anybody apart from Joe. I waited for you to come back so that you could have first refusal. Eh? To buy the pub. Oh, are you going to serve Biff, or have you forgotten how to pull a pint? No word, a phone call, no letter. I've been saving all my love for you, man. It's outside in a jar, in the car. I'll, I'll go and bring it in if you want. Oh, you can't just sweet talk me. Mandy, the sight of you puts all the clever words out of my mind. All that's left up here are the pictures. You can't just walk back into my life like this. I drove. And how long till you drive away again? Well, apparently it all depends on a lesbian love affair. <laughs> well, then there's everything in life. <laughs> See? Nothing's ever serious with you. It is. I've got an ingrowing tone. Well, well, let's go out tomorrow night for a meal. Bottle of wine, hold hands, talk about nothing, compare birthmarks. I don't have a birthmark. Well, I've got a felt tip pen. Bet you say that to all the girls. I'll book a table. Can I help you, love? Oh, um, yeah, I'm looking for Billy Hopwood. Girlfriend, eh? No. Do you know when they'll be home? I don't know where home is. I thought they lived here. Lived, aye. Sacked him, weeks back. What? Felt sorry for the little lad, but that father of his. Well, what was wrong? I couldn't get a day's work out of him. And stuff started to go missing. Not I could prove mine, but, well, you know how it is. Where did they go? 
Don't know. Don't care. Sorry. Exactly, do you know about this place? Oh, it's a shortcut to the holiday village. Oh, and doesn't anybody come up here? Not when they close the village down for winter. This feels terribly naughty. What, you mean like an affair? Listen, if I have an affair, it'll be with someone who's got something bigger than a mini. Oi, it's your car. <laughs> Any road? There's plenty of room in the back. Yeah, and we won't have to keep quiet. Well, there's nobody to disturb for two miles. Good. Just as long as my husband doesn't find out. Who's that? <laughs> His name's Nick Sheard. Isn't he gorgeous? Mm. Where's Zoe? On a beach in Jamaica by now. I didn't realise she was going away. Neither did I. Oh. Yeah, quite. With men, you can rely on them to cheat on you, lie to you, disappoint you. But women, well, we're not like that, are we? <laughs> Don't kid yourself, Rachel. Loving a woman screws you up every bit as much as loving a man. A uh, table for one? Are you the proprietor? A uh, partner. I'm from Skipdale Environmental Health. You dirty get! Hey, police! Quit it! What the hell's going on? Calm down. Right. What's your name? Uh, Glover. Ned Glover. There are a number of what appears to be food poisoning cases. We've got a report from the local doctor. Two customers who ate here last night. And a gentleman who I understand works here. My husband. But plenty more people ate here last night. No one else is ill. All the same. We're concerned that this might be the source. You can inspect the kitchen. They're always clean. We'll be doing that. For them prawns. Marlon, shut up. Borscht, blinis, I suggested. Would anybody listen? You want us to shut now? Up to you. Look, all right, you've made your point. We're going home. Not yet, you're not. Come on, girly. Let's have you out here. In a minute. Hey, turn that off, you filthy curve. Right, that's it. You're under arrest. Mm. 